In today's thrilling episode of True 911 Calls, a nine-year-old girl dies from strangulation, a motor vehicle collision has a tragic ending, and a mother meets the 911 dispatcher who helps save her child's life. Ready to dive in? At around 10.15 p.m. on February 27, 2019, Orlando police were called to a complex on Millennia Boulevard for the death of a nine-year-old girl. The victim, identified as Tiana Jean-Paul, was found lying on her family's couch, unresponsive and covered in bleach. Oh, <laughs> 
Where is she bleeding from? She drank bleach. She drank bleach. She drank a lot of bleach. She drank bleach? Yeah, she drank bleach. Yeah. All the workers have bleach, all the families have bleach. This is what she did. Okay. We will put her down and this is why we found her on her clothes. Okay, well, we're going to try and help her, okay? So I need you to lay her flat on her back on the ground. Oh, anybody that already here. The police already here. Everybody that, that already here. Really, what is going on? Is the officer there with you? The okay. police already here, yes. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let you go so they can help you. Okay, okay. thank you. According to an affidavit, Tiana's mother came home around 9 p.m. and saw her little girl on the couch. When she tried waking her up to get her to sleep in her bed, Jean-Paul was unresponsive. The mother removed the pillow that was on the girl's face and saw that she was foaming from the mouth. A neighbor who called 911 said initially that the mother told her Jean-Paul was sleeping before she died. The nine-year-old girl was transported to a hospital where she was pronounced dead later that night. An autopsy report indicated that Jean-Paul had bleach in her blood, but her cause of death was strangulation. The report further illustrated that she also suffered chemical burns on her eyes, eyelids, neck, upper chest, shoulders, upper right arm, and upper back. After the autopsy results were released, the Orlando Police Department interviewed Tiana's relatives who had access to the apartment on the day of the incident. One of her relatives, Berthelet Fifey, was unable to explain why he smelled like bleach or why there were bleach stains on his shoes. According to the police, evidence suggested that his niece was alive when Fifey arrived at the apartment and he was the only one with the victim at that time. The 55-year-old was arrested on a second-degree murder charge. In February 2020, Berthelet Fifey was declared mentally incompetent for trial. Orange Oskiola court judge Bob LeBlanc reviewed an expert's report. Fifey will now undergo treatment in a state mental facility. Don't forget to hit that like button so that YouTube knows to show you more of our videos. In the early hours of November 2nd, 2021, Henry Ruggs III was drunk driving at speeds up to 156 miles per hour with his girlfriend in his Corvette sports car before it slammed into the rear end of Tina Tinter's Toyota RAV4 on a residential street where the speed limit was 45 miles per hour. 23-year-old Tinter and her dog Max died from thermal injuries. The former Raider star and his girlfriend were seriously injured. Oh my god. 911 emergency, Razo 18841. Do you need police, fire, or medical? Uh, there was an accident here on Rainbow and Spring Valley Parkway. Um, the cars on fire and the kids are trying to get okay. people to stop to help. You said Rainbow and Spring Valley? Valley Parkway, yes. And did you witness the accident? The 6900 block of Spring Valley Parkway. Okay, it, and you said the vehicle is on fire, correct? It's on fire, yeah. What is your it's first name last name? Lois Wright. Nellis? Oh my God, I can't get no one to help the whole thing on I, fire. I do have a call set up. Can I have you verify your phone number, please? Okay, and did you witness the accident, or did you I, I was in bed and heard it. You heard it? Yes, there was two cars. There's a, a truck over there, a white tr tr truck, and then and then the car is almost gone. Okay, so it's two vehicles that you saw in the accident? Yes. Okay, so it's a I white not truck? I did not see the accident. I'm looking at it, though. Okay, so you see a white truck, correct? Yes. Is it older or newer? <laughs> I think it's a... Uh, it's a new, newer type one, I think. Okay. Oh no! Where is he the going vehicle to? that's on fire. Well, I thought it, I thought that truck. Oh, he moved over off. Okay, me. the vehicle that's on fire. I have no idea what it is. All I see is flames. Okay, and and it's almost all gone. Okay. All right. And Any idea on the it. weapons for anybody? What's that? Do you know about any drinking drugs or weapons for anybody? Weapons? Yes, drinking no, drugs. No, I, no, no, the kids are just okay. yelling for help. Okay, ma'am. We Someone's don't have a problem. We'll think. go ahead. You believe and somebody's gone, in the vehicle? Now. What's that? Do you believe somebody's in the vehicle that's on fire? Uh, yes, the way they were yelling, and you can't get near okay. it. Okay, we'll go ahead and let the fire department know. I'm going to go ahead and hang up, okay?
Okay, they're only a couple blocks okay, away. Thank you. And the car is gone. Okay. 911 emergency, Peralta 17124. Do you need police, fire, or medical? Uh, fire, medical, bad accident. Where at, Rainbow. sir? Rainbow Spring Valley South. Okay, were you involved? No, no, I'm not. I, uh, I live in the house on the street. There's a lady screaming for help in a uh, Lamborghini. She's trapped. And there's a vehicle on fire. I need medical 4646. Um, is it just a Lamborghini involved or is there? No, there's another vehicle on the Muller Road that's in flames. Uh, so two like, cars on fire? No, one car on fire. Lamborghini is uh, up on the curb. The Lamborghini is the one on the curb, not on fire? Correct. Uh, it looks like uh, one of the people pulled from the Lamborghini um, is unconscious. And you said you don't know if that person is conscious? I have no clue. I know um, the lady screaming at him, talking to him and whatnot, but I'm not sure. How many people are you seeing out there, sir? Uh, so I'm seeing two from the Lamborghini. Uh, I'm going to say one from the uh, SUV. He seems to be the one who's yelling and cursing. Uh, there's a couple other people walking around and uh, one security guard. Uh, I want to say the Lamborghini was probably speeding. I mean, I heard loud, loud you know, revving, uh, yeah, loud noises, and then a big collision. And, uh, okay. we got several officers on the way in the fire department as well. Um, okay. In the meantime, is there still a vehicle on fire or has yeah. it been extinguished? No, it's still on fire. And it's okay. Popping. It's, it's what now? It's popping, like popping. stuff is extinguished. Loading from it. Okay. Tinter, a Las Vegas resident, had hoped to become a computer programmer. She had worked for Target for about two years before recently taking an insurance company job. According to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, Ruggs was driving his 2020 Chevrolet Corvette and decreased his speed from 156 miles per hour to 127 miles per hour as he turned onto Rainbow Boulevard following the crash. Tina's Toyota RAV4 burst into flames after the collision and slid more than 570 feet before coming to a stop just blocks from her home. A bystander tried pulling out Tina from the burning Toyota, but could not because she was pinned inside the vehicle. A year before the fatal crash, Henry Ruggs' girlfriend, Rudy Washington, shared video on her YouTube channel of the Raider star speeding in his new Chevrolet Corvette in Las Vegas. Washington begs Ruggs to slow down and take her home. See, you better show me this song. What you mean? <laughs> 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 Say hey to my YouTube. <laughs> Every time you pay that, you
<laughs> the Clark County Coroner's Office released the findings that other significant conditions contributing to her death included inhalation of products of combustion, fractures of the nasal bones, right side ribs, left forearm, and chest. Ruggs was caught on video sobbing in the street with his girlfriend, Kiara Kilgo Washington, as Tinter's car was fully engulfed in flames. Somebody in the car. Can we get help? Can you please? They get him. They're coming. They're coming right now. He is not unconscious. Hey, look at me. Think about this, okay? Think about this, okay? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. It's their fault. His girlfriend, Kilgo Washington, suffered a serious arm injury in the crash. Meanwhile, Ruggs was taken to a nearby hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. According to a prosecutor, the accused blood alcohol content was shown to be 0.161 or more than double the legal limit. He was charged with felony counts of DUI resulting in death and reckless driving and faces up to 40 years if convicted. He was taken into custody and later released after posting $150,000 bail. Subsequently, Ruggs was placed under house arrest under strict conditions including alcohol monitoring via a device attached to his leg. This season, the player was emerging as a star from the Raiders with 24 catches for a team-high 469 yards and two touchdowns. He had a four-year, $16 million contract with the Raiders until he was swiftly cut from the team. Mia Galvin, a high school friend of Tinter said, she was a force to be reckoned with in the best possible way. She was never afraid to be herself. She never grew out of that. In November 2018, Newark police responded to a report a woman had possibly shot herself. When the officers arrived, they found 20-year-old Sierra Beal dead from a single gunshot wound. 911, what's the address of your emergency? 147. There was a gunshot in my apartment. Okay, I take a deep breath. I think my fiance shot herself. You think your fiance shot herself? Yeah, the door is locked. What room is she in? Our bedroom. I was out making food and I just... Okay. What is your name? My name is Cameron Scally. You can't get to her at all? The door is locked. I'm... Can you get it open? No, it's locked. I'm okay. Trying to all right. It. Okay, I already have help on the way. I want you to take a deep breath and I'm going to get you over to the police. Don't hang up, okay? Uh, uh, uh. Take a deep breath for me, okay? <laughs> You've got to be able to talk to the police dispatcher, okay? We've got help coming. Sure, I have Cameron on the line for... <laughs> Cameron? <laughs> What's going on, Cameron? Cameron. Yeah. Cameron. What yeah. happened? No. Come on. I was I was I was making okay. food and I was about to make like eggs and I hear just this really loud deafening gunshot and And what? And I 
I ran. I heard it. Came, I heard it came from the bedroom, and tried to get the door open. It still won't fucking budge. It smells like fucking gunpowder in here. Is the door locked? Yeah. He was in the bedroom. Who was in the bedroom? Yeah. My fiance. Have you yelled for her? Oh. Sierra. Sierra. I'm getting no response. You said you smell gunpowder? Yeah. Hey, where are you at now? I'm in my apartment. How many shots did you hear? I I just heard one. How long ago was this? It, it just happened. I called as soon as I fucking heard it. Was there a gun in the bedroom that you're aware of? I have... I had my gun in the closet. I have an AR-15. It was in my closet because I'm military. So I use that, you know, to practice, like, for rifle qualification. We send someone. Oh, we're getting someone over there, hon. Was the gun loaded? It shouldn't have been. It was, all the magazines were taken out. I didn't, I never keep a loaded gun. That's just my own personal thing. Okay. Your girlfriend, what's your girlfriend's name? Her name is Sierra Beal. B-E-A-L. S-I-E-R-R-A. How old is she? She just turned 20 on the 26th. Does she live there with you? Yes. Can I go outside? I don't want to be in here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can go outside, of course. I'm trying to... I tried to get this door open. She won't answer. Okay. You go outside. Sierra. Sierra. Had she been... Um... I'm scared. I don't know. Where are you at? Are you outside now? I'm, I'm outside my apartment. Okay. Is, it, is there anyone else in the apartment besides you? I've, in my apartment, uh, no, but, well, it was Sierra, but in the apartment complex, I don't know who's home and who's not. Please. Please send someone. Scared. Don't want, I don't want her to die. So we have um, officers and we have the squad in route there. Did you talk to her this morning? Yes, I did. She uh, came home because I needed someone to watch the cat while I went to class. And I had, I had packed her stuff up because we were going through a rough patch. And she kind of saw her wedding dress and just kind of went all quiet for like the next hour. Did she say anything to you? No. All right. Uh, the officers are here. You're there now? Yeah. Okay. All righty. I'll let you go. All righty. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Beale was born in Florida. She spent much of her childhood between Lancaster and Lake Placid, Florida, where some of her family lived. The 20-year-old woman died from a single gunshot wound in the South Westmore Avenue apartment she shared with her fiancé, Cameron Scally. Her death came nearly two weeks after the day she turned 20. The Licking County Coroner's Office said preliminary autopsy results show Beale died from a single gunshot wound to her neck. According to the autopsy report, her body showed no other signs of trauma. The Newark police initially responded to the residents for a reported self-inflicted shooting. However, detectives believed that there was foul play after conducting investigations. Scally allegedly claimed on the 911 call that Beale had shot herself with the AR-15 he kept in the closet. The victim's fiancé told her he used the rifle to practice for the rifle qualifications because he was in the military. Police reported finding an AR-15 positioned perfectly parallel to the victim's body. On the floor near the bed, they also found what happened to be a handwritten suicide note. Scally maintained that his fiancé committed suicide. 
He had told dispatchers that Beale was in the bedroom and he was unable to get the door open. In contrast, a police report noted Newark officers were able to kick the door in the first try. He was arrested and charged with aggravated murder in her death the same day. Beale was described as someone who would give the shirt off her back and she'd never harmed anyone. According to her great aunt, Pat Stoker, she was a very happy child and as she grew, loved to play with her much younger sisters. No further information about the verdict of the incident is available online. Forty-one-year-old Chastity Carey from Signature Bail Bonds in Stillwater made a frantic 911 call saying she had just shot a man. The man was identified as 38-year-old Brandon James Williams. 911. I just shot a man on top of the roof of the town center. Okay. I'm on the third floor. Third floor. Why is your address there at the town center? Okay, did you say you caught a man or you shot a man? I shot. Okay, ma'am, is he still up on top of the building? Yes, ma'am, as far as I can see. Okay, and what is your name, please? My name is Chastity. Okay, Chastity, do not hang up, okay? Let me get an officer started that way. I, I need you to hurry. Okay, let me get an officer started that way. Ron, I need please. Do what? 116 West Okay, ma'am, do not hang up on me, okay? I need you to hurry. I'm a bondsman. He was okay. He was coming after Central me. Control forty one. Shot turned, fired. He turned away from me as soon as I shot him. Oh, oh my God. God. Hey, ma'am, I just want to confirm. He's on the roof. Yes, ma'am. He's on the roof. My son just stepped out the window. Okay. I got him. I don't want him. Central forty nine. Were you clear? Okay, I've got officers headed that way, okay? Can you give me a description of the individual that you shot? It's Brandon James Williams. He's in a gray tank top. He's in jeans. I shot him out on a felony case for burglary and possession of CDS. Okay, a gray t-shirt and jeans? Yes, ma'am. Okay, is he still down on the roof or do you think he ran? Yes, ma'am. He's still, no, ma'am. He's laying down. Okay. Yeah, he turned. They're on their way. I've got... I've got them on their way. How can we make access to the rest of the town center? Um, Hold on just a second. I Central Station 1 need you to stage in the area of <laughs> On subject down, shots fired. <laughs> stage in the area, move to life dance. Okay, how can we make access? Um, either the back of the building. 20 clear. Okay, ma'am, what are you dressed in? I'm in jeans and a bed Okay, and okay, and uh, hold on just a second. Okay, did you shoot him with a? Time I shot him with a weapon. You shot him with a weapon. If there is a weapon. The weapon is in my office. I shot, okay. I shot him. Central 14 and other units. My RP is stating that she did shoot him with a weapon. She has secured her weapon in her office. And you're in the hallway outside of your office? Okay, ma'am, where are you at again? I am right in the hallway inside the exit door. You couldn't get the exit door earlier. Okay, okay. and what is your, is your officer with you? My name is Chastity. There are officers on the roof. Okay, is an officer with you, Chastity? There, there, there are three officers up here. Yes, ma'am. I just want to make certain that an officer is with you right now. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. There's three. Right. I'm not going anywhere. There's three officers up here. Okay. So right where you're at. Okay, Chastity. Just let me know for certain. Is an officer right there with you? Yes, ma'am. They're okay. right here with me. Thank you very much, Chastity. Yes, ma'am. The night before the shooting, Carrie received a text from Williams that read, Gone to Florida. Williams had been released on a $35,000 bond in a second-degree burglary case. He owed about $3,500 to Carey, who was serving as his bond agent. Thinking Williams was on the run, Carey quickly came up with the plan to apprehend him before he skipped the state. She had the intention of revoking his bond and delivering him back to the Payne County Sheriff's Office. 
Carrie told investigators that during the meeting, a fight broke out between her and Williams, and she shot Williams in self-defense. Why? What are you doing this to me for? In the footage, William tells Carrie not to touch him, and you see a curtain move. Carrie runs to her drawer, grabs her gun, and shoots Williams. When investigators questioned Carrie's son about the fatal shooting, he informed officers there was a GoPro camera in the office that had recorded the incident. Authorities then watched the recorded video from the GoPro camera and saw Carrie's story did not match up with the video evidence. He never possessed the gun. He never had the gun. The gun was uh, closed in a drawer until Miss Carrie pulled the gun out of the drawer. She was the aggressor. Mr. Williams was never violently aggressive towards either one of them. In an interview, she said the video did not show the whole story. You shot him in the back. No, sir. I've... It was in the back, but it was in self-defense. Carrie was arrested on one count of first-degree murder. She told the jury it was self-defense because she believed Williams would have killed her and her son if he got a hold of the gun. Her attorney also argued that she didn't have any intention to kill Williams. If she wanted to do a kill shot, she was less than a foot away from him. She could have put it to his head or put it right behind his heart. The very first thing she does is call 911. You, you don't call 911 if you want somebody to die. A jury found her not guilty of the charge. The family of Williams then filed a civil suit. Noble McIntyre, the family's attorney, said, I am very confident in this case that the jury is going to be unanimous in the finding that what she did, that in Oklahoma we do not allow Oklahoma to grab a gun and shoot somebody in the back that's trying to get away. That's made no aggressive moves towards you. That's just something we don't do here. Erin Fennell quickly dialed 911 when her three-week-old son, Parker, suddenly stopped breathing. Fennell was connected to MedStar Emergency Medical Dispatcher Valerie Carson, who helped save baby Parker. Our ambulance, what's the address of the emergency, please? Please verify the address and the phone number. Please tell me exactly what's not responsive. Um, I'm trying to shake him, I mean, like grab his arm, and he's just not responsive. He's not listening. Like, if I yell his name, nothing. Okay. Are you with your child now? Yes. How old is the baby? Three weeks. How old? Three weeks. Okay. Is he, okay, um, I got the ambulance. Start your direction. I'm just going to get a couple of in pieces of information from you, okay? Give me just a okay. second to catch the computer up with us, okay? Now, okay. Is, he, is he breathing? No. Okay. All right, ma'am. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you how to help him, okay? All right, okay. Okay. Listen carefully, okay? Are okay. you right beside him now? Yes. Okay. So, what I want you to do is I want you to lay him flat on his back on the floor and move anything under his head, okay? Okay. okay. You'll next time and look at his mouth for food or vomit. Is there anything in his mouth? <laughs> so. Okay, all right. So place your hand on the baby's forehead, the other hand under his neck and shoulders, and then slightly tilt his head back. Put your ear next okay. to his mouth. Can you see or feel hear, or feel or hear any breathing? Um, no. Okay. So I'm going to tell you how to give mouth to mouth. Completely cover the baby's mouth and nose with your mouth. Then blow five puffs of air into the lungs, about a half a second each, just enough to make the chest rise with each breath. Okay. Did you feel the air going in and out? He kind of made a cry, but he's still not really responsive. Okay. 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 But did you feel the air going in and out? Not, um, maybe. Okay, tilt his head back just a little bit more, okay? And then completely cover his mouth and nose with your mouth again, and then blow five puffs into his lungs about half a second each, just enough to make his chest rise, okay? Did you feel the air going in and out? Oh, my God, he's turning purple. Um, okay. I felt one go in. Okay, all right. All right, so listen carefully. I'm going to tell you how to do chest compressions. Make sure he's flat on his back on the floor. Place two fingers on his breastbone in the center of his chest, right between the nipples, okay? Do you understand so far? Yes. We're going to push down on one inch with only your two fingers and touching the chest. Pump his chest rapidly five times, at least twice per second. Let the chest come all the way up between pumps. Do it now and tell me when you're done, okay? Ready? Okay. We're going to go at this rate. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Stop, okay? Okay. Okay. Now, check in the baby's mouth. Okay, so, okay. So what we're going to do now is put your hand under his neck and shoulders again and slightly tilt his head back again and put your mouth over his mouth. You're going to give him one puff of air 
Then pump the chest five more times. Make sure your fingers are on the breastbone in the center of the chest right between the nipples, okay? Do you understand? Okay. Yeah, five more breaths and then yeah, five, five more. Five, five, no, one pump, five pumps. Five, one breath, five pumps. So now one we're going to we're gonna give him one puff and then five pumps, one puff and then five pumps, okay? Keep doing it until they can. Breathing a little bit now. He's making noise. Okay, so then let's stop for a second. Let's time his breathing to okay. see if it's effective, okay? I want you okay. to say now, every single time he takes a breath in, starting immediately. Now. Next one. Now. Next one. Now. One more. Now. Okay, good. He's breathing at an effective rate, okay? Yeah. We're going to stay right okay. up. We're going to stay right there with him, okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. And we're going to stay right there with him. Make sure his head is slightly tilted back. Check his breathing often. Be sure to keep okay. him warm, okay? If the baby okay. vomits, turn him on his side and clean out his nose and mouth. I'm going to stay on the line until help arrives. Tell me when the paramedics okay. are right with him or if the, or with the baby or if anything changes, okay? Does the breathing okay. slows down or anything else? Okay. okay. Just keep him right there. You can keep him on his side, okay? If his breathing slows okay. down, you need to let me know, okay? Okay. Okay. Just make sure you keep his head slightly tilted, tilted slightly back and don't stop until they're with him. Don't leave them alone until okay. they're right there with him. Now, is your door unlocked? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Just let me know when they get inside with him. They're coming as quickly as possible to help him, okay? Okay. Was he, was he premature or anything? Um, no, he was um, actually past due, but he does have a cleft lip and palate. He's a cleft palate? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. You can try to console him to keep a close on and make sure that that breathing doesn't change, okay? Okay. If he slows down, you let me know, but they're coming as fast as possible to help him, okay? They're, they're here. Okay. Are they yeah, inside with him? The they're almost, they're inside, but they're not here. Let me know when they're inside with him, okay? You, right, did, you did a great here. job with him, okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let you go, ma'am. They'll take good care until the paramedics get there, okay? Okay, thank, thank you. you. When Parker began to cry that day, Fennel tried to calm him down, but he soon became quiet and unresponsive. Carson deduced that little Parker's heart had stopped beating and began to walk the mother through CPR. Although her voice was shaky, she managed to not panic. After a few minutes, Parker let out a shriek. Both Fennel and Carson had a sense of relief. The dispatchers stayed on the line until the first responders arrived. Fennel got the opportunity to meet the woman who saved her baby's life. She expressed gratitude and said, I'm never going to forget her name. I'm never going to forget her face. I'm never going to forget that phone call. She is the reason Parker is here, and we're grateful forever and ever. Carson has been working with EMS for 40 years and has spent the last 30 years as a dispatcher. For more True 911, watch this episode next. You can also let me know which call was your favorite in the comments below.